and here we go. Okay. A relationship won't make you feel better. That's up to you. That's the title today, and we're getting to that shortly. So, welcome to my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these topics, or sorry, I do these talks, not topics. So I'll get to the topic in a moment. Well, I'll repeat the topic in a moment. <laughs> I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And of the latest count, as of today, I'm at number 408. And there seems to be an unending resource of things to talk about love and relationships. And somehow I'm not surprised. I mean, my first book was 50 Principles. I'm 350 past that now, so there's a lot more to come, I'm sure. So today's topic is a relationship won't make you feel better. That's up to you. I can leave it like that because frankly the title is pretty self-explanatory. But I want to break this down a bit because some people out there, perhaps not you, perhaps somebody you know, maybe more intimately than you'd like to admit, is waiting for that relationship to make them feel whole. Is waiting for that relationship to make them feel complete. Is waiting for that relationship to actually um, make them feel like they are, that they're okay, there's nothing wrong with them. Because when they're single, they're feeling that perhaps they are um, lacking something. Because they're lacking a relationship, lacking a partner, lacking somebody else. And so they're not feeling, frankly, as um, complete on their own as they could be. Now, if you're watching my broadcast before, and I've got plenty out there, as I mentioned, over 400 now, I've talked about the codependent model, and I want to speak to it from this angle just to give you another insight, perhaps, and, and informative education that might just change your perspective. Because I like doing that, you know, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. I've talked about it, talked to it, I'll say, rewind, rewind. Okay, I'll say it this way. Relationships are additive. They are not replacing. So when you are out meeting somebody and you're out dating, checking around see who's out there and stuff like that, you might think that the relationship is going to replace your boring, dull, um, plain life. Well, it might for a little bit of time. However, and this is a big however, if the life you live is boring, dull, and I think was the other word I used? Um, well, I'll use the term vanilla. Plain vanilla, that is, not, not the great Madagascan spice, but plain vanilla. Then that's going to start re, um, resurfacing the relationship. The relationship will just create a ripple in your experience. I'll say that one again another way because I'm realizing it didn't hit home the way I wanted it to. When you live your life from a place of missing something, it's not going to be good enough until you meet somebody and it's all going to be lacking until they show up. When they do show up, it will not change, ultimately, because you'll be feeling like there's a lack anyway. That person cannot fill that piece inside of you that's missing because it's not missing. That's the mistaken approach. And I've talked about this before. It's in my book, and I've said it many other times about how relationships are not 50-50. And I mean from the point of view that you're not walking around with a piece missing. If you ever read the book, The Missing Piece by Shel Silverstein, it talks about this in a different way, but I want to speak about it from this point of view, which is that we as individuals, we as human beings, in case you have noticed when you look in the mirror, are not half a person, we're a whole person. But we forget and think that somehow that as a single person we're incomplete and that somebody else will come along and make us feel whole. It's a nice romantic sentiment. It's a codependent crap shoot to do it that way, just to be blunt. Don't give the thumbs up and the like, I appreciate that. Oh, quick sidebar. This is, a, this is actually a Facebook Live initially, but it will be rebroadcast on Facebook in recorded form, also on YouTube and also on my um, my now growing um, iTunes podcast. So when I'm saying thanks for the likes, that's the people who are watching me live on Facebook on the original broadcast. So if you're watching this in replay elsewhere, listening to it on iTunes, you can do thumbs up in the air. <laughs> I'll take those, but it won't show up in my broadcast. So just to be clear. So getting back on topic, that was like back on track. When I say that a relationship will not make you feel better, that's up to you. I mean that sincerely. That if you're feeling lonely, or feeling left out, or feeling like a lack, feeling that you don't have what you want, feeling that life isn't working, and all these other feels that aren't feeling good, 
when you're single is the best time to sort those things out. And I mean that from the point of view of being a coach and having clients who have helped through that heartbreak, wounded, upset place, thinking that when they find a love, they'll feel okay. Because a lot of times, a lot of you out there know this, your experience of relationship ending is you feel wounded, empty, void, sad, left alone. So you think of again another relationship, it will make it better again. But that will only go along for a certain period of time, and that person can't keep you feeling that way without them being drained by it. I like to, I like to think, I do think this, and I talk about this, is that relationships are additive to each other, as in additive to each other's lives. When you come together in a relationship, it's not 50-50, it's 100-100, which means that you are not dependent upon the other person making you feel whole, and they are not dependent upon you to make them feel whole, because that would drain you both completely, and that's not effective. A truly healthy relationship is where both partners are holistically whole, complete, and feeling autonomous so that they can add to each other's experience versus filling up a gap they think they have. So if you're single and feeling like that's missing for you, you may want to look in the mirror. You may want to take the time to look at yourself and review and to really go deeper inside and say, okay, where are the wounds inside? Where are those parts inside where I feel like there's something missing? Because you're the one, yes, you're the one, that can fill those gaps up with your own love. And I've done the self-love access. I'm not recommended or suggested the self-love practice for a while, I'll do that at the end, I think, depending on if something else shows up in the meantime. But I want to make sure you get the point is that the true resource that you are yourself, yes, you are a resource, is what's inside. It's that whole, healthy, autonomous being that you are. But the trap you fall into is thinking that, oh, but, well, let me put this context. The trap you fall into, often, is when you're around all these other couples. And one of those challenges of society, it seems, is when around other people who have something you don't, you feel left out. And yes, in relationships especially, that becomes a challenge because you'll be in a place where you're looking around and seeing the people around you in love and happy and joyful and everything else, and you're gonna feel perhaps upset because you think that that's the answer to your problem. It isn't. It's a bonus to be in a relationship with lots of love and joy. I'm not putting down relationships, as you know. I'm about relationships. That's my passion, my sport, my work. But it starts with you being okay as you are. It starts with you being healthy and happy as you are. It starts with you enjoying your life as a whole, single, healthy person. Because then you don't need that other person. But the funny thing is, you actually start attracting that other person because you won't be needed. This is the secret, by the way. Secret. Keeping it quiet, as it were is that truly, when you are in a place where you're a whole, happy and healthy as you are, when you respect and appreciate yourself, when you own and honor your powers, your gifts, your beingness and all those things, you start to become attractive. Isn't that surprising? I hope it's not surprising in fact, it's kind of funny, but it's true. And by tapping into that inside yourself, by renewing, restoring and, and uplifting yourself, you will actually get to a place where you'll be so filled up with who you are that people want to have some of that themselves. They'll be like, oh, I, know, I like that person. I want to get to know them. I want to find out who they are because they're so attractive. So one of the best ways to get into that relationship you've been pining for is to not pine for it. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds backwards. It's almost like reverse psychology. But the reality is this. The most attractive people are the ones who don't need a relationship. If you noticed, perhaps... I know I did this for myself. When I look around, I would notice women who were in a relationship and I almost knew the relationship because I found them so attractive. Because when the women were in a relationship, they were shining so bright. They were in joy and in love and in light. And so they were very attractive. Here's the thing. You don't need to wait for a relationship for that to happen. So if you're looking for a relationship and thinking that I need to be a certain way, here's the answer to that. You do. The way you need to be is self-loving, self-appreciating joyful, happy, and enjoying who you are as a being because it makes you more attractive. And as I said, in my experience, I remember this years ago, how I can almost guarantee that the women I was attracted to were in a relationship because they were so happy. That they weren't, when they were single, they wouldn't shine that way. And I had this almost like clear black and white delineation. Women who were single weren't happy, the women in a relationship were happy. And I'm using a simple explanation for that. But it kind of was the way I saw it. And so... Maybe my work is now helping the singles out there, including myself, including myself, to really appreciate who we are. So 
to love, appreciate and self honor ourselves, to respect who we are, to appreciate who we are, and to really become that shiny light that we think that we want from a relationship partner, because then we become the shiny light to attract the relationship we want. So it's a, it's a two step process in a way. Love yourself, then you can be loved. That's the way to live life. <laughs> but the thing I want to make clear about this is it's not just, it's not always that simple, even though it's very easy to understand. I should say, sorry, it is simple, but it's not always easy to do. Simple to understand, easy to implement. For some of you out there, and I know you're out there, because I've had clients like you, you're carrying baggage that is in the way of you feeling free. You're feeling, you're carrying upsets and wounds and past hurts from past relationships that are in the way of you feeling whole, joyful and happy because you don't want to fake it. To fake being happy and joyful, even though you weren't carrying those wounds and pain inside, generally won't work because the pains are more visible because they're more deeply buried, not well, no, that's the worst thing. They're more visible because they're more um, emotionally weighted, that's probably what I would say. And yes, you can hide them to a degree, but that hidden part will be like a void that someone can feel, and that void is negative. So until, until you choose to face those wounds, hurts, suffering, past hurt feelings, you're going to be carrying that baggage with you everywhere you go, even in new relationships. And yes, some people say, well, I can love them enough, they'll heal themselves. Yeah, right. That's possible, but it's a lot of work, and frankly, it puts them in a therapist role. And if you want to be in a relationship with somebody who's going to be a therapist, good luck with that. I don't recommend it. Not until you do your own work. So before you get there, seek out someone who can be your coach, your counselor, your therapist, your guide, to heal those parts inside that are wounded. Those wounds will not necessarily heal. They will scar, but they won't necessarily heal. And those wounds, when they scar, become just more... Um, sensitive because when you touch them you'll feel them more vividly and so will some so will you and somebody else touches them so having those wounds doesn't help anybody and if it's guilt about a past relationship where you may have screwed up that doesn't help anybody either carrying those wounds inside from past relationships are not helping you or anybody else so I'm imploring you inviting you and suggesting to you that if you really want an amazing relationship become an amazing person by healing those wounds inside once and for all. So I've given you a bunch of ideas here, and this is meant to be a, this is a weekend broadcast, so that's when it's something more casual for those watching on camera. But I'm also intending to give you some insights and suggestions of what you can do for yourself. So a couple of things I'm gonna give you up as a next step. I mentioned earlier the self-love practice. This is a starting point to help start changing your paradigm once and for all so you can actually be the spectacular person you really are, so you can actually attract a spectacular relationship. Amazing, amazing spectacular spectacular you see what I'm going here you become the mirror for the relationship you want to attract and that's where it starts is the mirror in the mirror I'm tying this together beautifully <laughs> so the self-love practice which I haven't recommended for a, a, a while but I was doing a lot consistently so I'm going to bring it up again as a starting point so your homework should you choose to accept it is to take this practice to the mirror and I mean this this way to start healing this wound to start appreciating yourself to start raising your own self-esteem and self-approval Start by looking in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, take the time to see who you really are. Beyond any of the tiredness, the wounds, any of that sort of stuff, see who you really are. And start to notice the love inside. This practice you can do twice a day, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, doesn't take that long. But do it once you connect. In the mirror, seeing your, in your own eyes, connecting with who that person is inside, feeling the love within them, and feeling the love within yourself. And then five minutes, five minutes, as a minimum, you look in your own eyes and you say to yourself, I love you. And you let it connect and you feel it inside yourself as if it's coming back out of the mirror at you. And you do this as a practice, not like rushing through it, but say it, feel it. Connect, say it, feel it, connect. And keep that going for five minutes. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, and do that for, well, do that right now for the next week. But if you do it for a month, even better. Because it starts to change your wiring inside. That's your recommended homework. Here's an invitation I'll add on top of that. If you want to go deeper, is talk with me. Reach out to me on my website, which is barryselby.com. And click on the Let's Chat uh, menu on the left, left side of the menu and sign up for a discovery session. 
take a next step to start healing your heart and get where you want to go in love and life. That's my offer to you. And it's not this is not meant to be a pitch, a pitch, but it's an opportunity to talk. So if you watch my broadcast, you know I've got a lot of content. I can help you with this stuff. But I would suggest if you get stuck and you want to move forward, that's the second piece I'm offering my imitation. So homework, imitation, and reminders. Reminders of this. If you haven't seen my broadcast every day, I do have them saved for you to watch anytime you want. Hi Donna, nice to see you in my broadcast. Thanks for being here. Um, just wrapping up actually, just signing off. Um, so I have these saved on my, my Facebook business page, my YouTube channel, and also my podcast on iTunes. Yes, they're on my iTunes. For those people who drive and want to listen to my broadcast, you can do that too. And, and um, you can listen to them sequentially too. So on my business page on Facebook, it's Barry Selby, the author. On my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And on iTunes, you can do a search for Messages from the Masculine. That's my channel. That's my um, podcast channel. We can subscribe and then record, listen to all my talks there. And you can add comments and, and reviews and feedback in all those places. Um, and again, do the homework. If you want to reach out for help, you can. You know where to find me. And if you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. This is a public service announcement <laughs> from me to you. And I hope it gives you some of the guidance, some assistance, and some remi reminders. And as always, I appreciate you. I support you. I'm here for you. Take care of yourselves. I will see you again tomorrow for number 409. A little branding, I guess. Let's do some cleaning tomorrow. I know I'll see what the talk's going to be. I don't want it is yet, but today's 408. Hope this has been a help to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow.